Hello YouTube. One of the latest projects that I'd like to embark on is making a home guard style bow. This is a long bow where the string only touches the limbs at one point at the knocks. It'll be about 54 inches, which is a little short for a conventional home guard style bow. The inner limbs are going to be wide and fairly thin. I mean, that's, that's flat. And the outer limbs are going to be fairly narrow, but rigid. They're going to be dowels in this case. And the core is going to be about 30 inches of one inch diameter Schedule 40 PVC pipe. I think this is going to be a fast bow. The wood weighs about 70 grams per foot. The PVC weighs about twice that. So by removing some tip weight, the tip speed should be raised and ultimately the efficiency of the bow hopefully will be a little bit better. I'm really looking forward to trying this and let's get Here's the it. core of our bow. This is 30 inch long Schedule 40 PVC, one inch diameter. I've went and marked 15 inches, so that's the absolute center, then two and a half and three inches on either side. This is where I'll begin the taper and finish the taper. Let's skip a bit. So now with this piece heated, I'm going to go ahead, use the 2x4, and flatten it out a little bit more aggressively than I usually do. Because again, this is a really short bow. I mean, the core is very short. The final bow will not be short, but we don't want to go and overstress it too much. Nevertheless, some care should be taken to not over flatten it near the handle. Over flattening it at that point could easily create a risk of collapse, limb collapse. I take it off and check to make sure it's straight halfway through. Then you can go back and continue flattening. While putting on some pressure, you can draw it through. Since due to the length of the 2x4 that I'm using, the very tip doesn't flatten completely the way that I'm using it right now, holding it down with my body weight. It's acceptable, but it's not perfect. But by drawing it out through here, the still soft plastic can be more perfectly flattened. Just another second and that'll be done. There. There that is. I'm going to go do the exact same thing to the other side now, and that's where we'll check back in. The core now complete. I flattened both sides. And then I went ahead and ran it under some cold water to set it. That leads me to one question that I have. I'm not entirely 100% certain what that does. A lot of materials, when they melt or soften, become... Uh, amorphous and then when they crystallize or harden 
sometimes they crystallize in different ways. You know, they exhibit polymorphism of crystal form, and different crystals have different properties. That's why you can harden and temper steel, why it's not just all the same. The rate at which it's cooled and the rate at, and how high you heat it again after it's cooled determines the different types of steel crystals that are around, just like you temper chocolate by melting it all to get rid of all the crystals, cooling it to develop some, and then melting it to get rid of the undesirable ones. So I, I do have some question as to whether rapid cooling of the PVC affects it in any substantial way. I don't know, but it's something that might be worth looking into. And just running under some water may not be sufficient to detect in any case. So we still have our core here. That's what we're left with. And now I'm going to go ahead and insert the the sias, or rather, just the ends of the bow. They're both going to be one foot exposed on each side, with about two inches inside of the limbs on each side. That should provide sufficient contact, maybe three inches. So the way I'm going and heating the ends here is mainly along the one side, the back side, and the end, avoiding the edges because I want to keep those flat for now. Normally I try and keep it more diffuse, but right now I really want to concentrate it on the center of this. I went ahead and just slightly tapered it to all the ends that I'm inserting into an almost lenticular shape, just very slightly. And they're going to be inserted up to depth of two inches. Heating it and pinching it slightly. This is just to get it to have the basic right form. After this, we're going to pull it out, put some different forms of glues and sealers on it, and then reinsert it. This is, again, just making sure it's centered, straight, and inserted to the right depth. You can always reheat it later to shape it a little bit more, but for now, that's really pretty good. All right, take a look at that. Pretty darn straight, pretty nice. Pretty centered. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and show you the result. Result of my little heating the ends and then inserting the, the outer limbs was this. After it cooled sufficiently, went ahead and took them out. Now I can go ahead and smooth this off, finish it up, coat the ends of the the outer limbs with, in this case, I'm going to use silicone sealer, probably a little hot glue, since I seem to use that on everything, and then I'm going to pop them back in. The short length of the inner core really does make me a little nervous, but the long outer limbs should go a long way towards minimizing stresses on it. I think this is going to be a, a fine bow, and it should be a very fast bow. I'm looking forward to, to going and getting it glued up. Here's the result. After I've glued in the ends, long, rigid, outer limb, flexible, flat, inner limb, and again on the other side. I ended up inserting each of them 12 and a half inches instead of my plan 12 inches, or 12 inches exposed. So instead of three inches inside the limb, there's two and a half. I think it'll turn out really well. I'm going to go ahead and let this cool and sit. I'll carve the knocks and taper the tips tomorrow. Probably only the last three or four inches are going to be really tapered. The rest of it should remain about, about as it is. And I expect the bow to pull somewhere in the order of 60 pounds. This could really be promising, and I'm looking forward to getting it strung up tomorrow.